sometimes people use this phrase in a quite trivial way. So a journalist might report on a vote that went against a certain group, and they'll say there was much weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Or parents of a teenager might describe to their friends the way that their child is uh, you know, thrown a tantrum and just said, you know, uh, there was much weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Uh, but these light-hearted uses of the phrase blind us to the horrors that these words describe. Weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth is the awful fate of those consigned to the outer darkness. The phrase itself comes from expanding on a common saying of Jesus. Uh, sometimes the saying is translated weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, sometimes it's translated wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's because the underlying Greek word for weeping and wailing could be translated either way. But when you uh, combine those two translations, it gives this very pleasing rhythmic pulse, weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's called a dactylic meter for those interested in poetry. Uh, but let's not get distracted by the sound of the words. Let's press in to the meaning. Uh, the word translated either weeping or wailing is a word for bitter crying, lamentation. It is the deep sadness of grief, as well as of self-recrimination. Think of how Peter wept bitterly, having denied Jesus three times. According to Isaiah and Revelation, our future hope, the new heavens and the new earth, are a place free from such weeping. But the outer darkness is a place of continual weeping and wailing and also the gnashing of teeth. That's the other phrase, gnashing of teeth. This in the Bible is consistently, it is a description of anger. Uh, in Job, his so-called friends, these miserable comforters, they gnash their teeth at poor old Job. In Psalm 35, the wicked gnash their teeth at the Messiah. In Acts 7, they gnash their teeth at Stephen before stoning him to death. It's about the, the gritting of the teeth and the clenched jaw that comes from anger. So out of darkness is a place of violent fury. So put these two terms together and you get a grotesque portrait of hell, a grotesque portrait of humanity. You see, hell is self-pitying, self-righteous anger stretching on into eternity. The damned cry bitter tears and grind their teeth in fury. Sullen self-pity and furious self-righteousness grow in the outer darkness. Therefore, we know what hell is like. We, we don't need medieval portraits or Hollywood movies. We know hell. Every time we see melancholy and murder in our own hearts, we see hell. From the Bible, think of Cain utterly downcast because his sacrifice was not accepted and he goes quickly from brooding to brutality. Think of King Saul. He is rejected after offering the wrong sacrifices and he too descends into melancholy and murder, at least in intention. Think of Jonah, self-righteously waiting for Nineveh to burn and when it's saved, he is angry to the point of death. Self-recrimination, self-pity, Self-righteousness, these things, they go together in Scripture and they produce both weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Psychologically, we know how this happens. In our own lives, we know how it happens, don't we? When we seek to justify ourselves, even in this life, our failures produce petulant regret and an anger that needs to go somewhere. Very often that anger goes on to others. If we haven't laid our sins on Jesus, we bear the burden ourselves, and it's just too much to bear. Crushed under the weight of our failures, we weep and wail and we gnash our teeth. But that's just the failures of this life. What about when Jesus judges the world in righteousness? What about when our whole lives are brought into the light and when eternity is at stake? Who could bear for the judge of all to convict us of utter failure and to lay the blame squarely on us. No one can bear that. But hell is the slavery begun in this life of sinners continuing to shoulder their own guilt. And just as they've done all their lives, they remain in bitter self-recrimination, self-pity, self-justification, weeping and wailing and the gnashing of teeth. What do you do with your sin? Do you turn in on yourself? Do you harden up 
Do you, do you grow bitter and angry? That can end right now. You don't need to bear your sins a moment longer. You can't do it. You cannot atone for your own guilt. And you, know, you cannot bear the weight of it. There's one thing you can do though. You can lay it on Jesus and walk free in Him. Weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, it's a hell of a life. Come to Jesus. In Him, you are redeemed from it all.